Hello, this is Matt. Kose. Mark. Guillaume. James. Mel. Zach. This is David. Terry here. This is PSG Talking. Le seul podcast sur le PSG en anglais. Hello and welcome to the latest installment of PSG Talking, a very special Memorial Day edition. I'm your host, Ed, and yes, I'm wearing some new PSG drip. I think that's what the kids call it nowadays. Uh, we have a jam-packed show for you today. Since the season ended, rumor, speculation have been running rampant at the Parc de Prince. And here to help me break it all down, we've got two distinguished guests. We have Kose Espinosa, right there in the middle if you're watching this on YouTube. And we also have Carl Oscar Kalstrom over there on the right. Gentlemen, how is everyone doing this Monday afternoon, evening, wherever it is you are in the time zone? Uh, how's everyone doing? Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing just fine. Thank you. And, you know, it's been a pleasure to have a bunch of appearances lately, especially since I, you know, uh, kind of went MIA a little bit uh, <laughs> earlier this year. So, you know, just happy to, to, to be a part of this constantly again. And, you know, yeah. here we are. Well, glad to have you back. You're making up for lost time. And Carl, how are things over there in Sweden? Amazing. Here in North Sweden, we've got very, very nice weather right now. So summer is slowly coming. Um, been productive lately, so that's awesome. And I'm also happy to be on once again. Fantastic. I was aiming for the last two years. I don't <laughs> <laughs> You didn't need to have yeah, you guys are definitely making up for lost time. We love having yeah. you guys on. You're, you're a couple of my, my favorite contributors. I love everyone that comes on the show, but you too especially. So let's just get into it. And the topic I want to talk about, we're going to split this show into two parts. First part is going to be all about managers, Pochettino at PSG and elsewhere because there's a lot going on. It's kind of like a domino effect. One manager leaves and then it's all this speculation. So let's just dive in on that. Um This whole situation got me pretty heated on social media Um and that's the involve. And, and that's involving the PSG's manager, Mauricio Pochettino. There was a report. I saw it in The Athletic. I'm sure others picked it up as well. But essentially, the report stated that Tottenham Hotspur had reached out to Pochettino about a potential return to the club. Now, PSG has said the relationship with Poch is good. And um, Leonardo, who you know, we all know is the sporting director, has said that, they, that Pochettino has a two-year deal on his contract with PSG and that everyone's happy. And all of these reports... It's just made up. There's nothing really to read into it. So that's what I want to ask you guys. Is there anything to read into this? What, what do you see? I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't think that The Athletic, which is a pretty reputable paper or you know organization, I don't think they would report this if it wasn't true. What do you think about the rumor? And do you think it's wrong that Pochettino answered the phone from his former club after just coming here six months ago? What do you guys think? We can start with um, Carl on this one. Uh, so... I'm pretty sure there's interest for from both uh, Spurs and Real Madrid. Uh, I believe Fabrizio Romano said so, and I tend to believe everything he said, says blindly. Um, I'm not annoyed with the Pochettino personally, uh, and I'm not, I'm not even sure like Daniel Levy at, at Tottenham would con- contact him directly or go through his. I don't know, his entourage, as everyone likes to call it. Um, I, I'm not annoyed with Poch. I am I am annoyed with Leonardo, however, and I've made that very clear online. We'll get to him. Uh, yeah, we'll get to him. So, no, I'm, I'm not annoyed with the Poch. Uh, if he, he's not happy, even though he, he, he doesn't mean for stuff to come out, either pe- people around him unintentionally or intentionally leaks stuff, uh, and that's sort of... I, that always happens in football nowadays. Everything is very... People try to contain it, but leaks come out about just about everything. Uh, and I'm not sure we, we should be angry at Pochettino for having certain opinions about how things are run. It is, I mean, what got me heated is that he's only been here for a few months. He professed that he loves the club. He's a former player. It's kind of like you start dating someone new and then you answer a phone call from your ex after a few months. Like, that's the part that got me, like, heated. Like, why are you even answering the phone? You just got here. And you're not really on a good footing because you you finished second in the French League. So it's like, who are you to be picking up the phone from any other club? You just got here. 
that's my that's why I got upset. But Kose, what do you think? Oh, uh, you know, I can see both points of view. And I think that that um you know, Pochettino had a very hard first season. You know, he had to deal with many challenges. Uh, we got, we got, uh, we ha- we had some very good games. We had some not very good games as well. But you know, um, I think that people are invested in this project, and and PSG want to move on forward with Pochettino. So I didn't really pay attention until the rumor really got bigger for me to take it more serious. Uh, at the beginning, I thought it was just full of loopholes, so I just wasn't convinced. But um, if it does happen for me, this is a situation of what will happen. If in the end, you know, Zidane comes to PSG and Pochettino leaves, then maybe I'm not, <laughs> maybe I'm not that uh, that pissed at um, him thinking about Spurs. But it's all about you know how the project seems affected and and how our planning for the summer and such a pivotal summer seems affected. So I think we'll have to wait and see what the outcomes are so we can start drawing conclusions. Yeah, you're reading my notes because that's that's my next question. I wanted to ask you guys, wh- is what is going on at PSG with Pochettino a direct result of Zidane stepping down at Real Madrid? And I've got his quotes up here and it's pretty scathing. So he said, I'm leaving Real Madrid because I feel the club is no longer giving me the trust I need. It isn't offering me the support to build something medium to long term. Um, it, this is not Zidane stepping down because he's burnt out or whatever. This is him stepping down because he has a philosophical difference with Real Madrid hierarchy. They don't. Fe- he doesn't feel, at least, that they have confidence in him. So he's leaving. He's stepping down. Um, what do we think? I mean, is this Pochettino story linked to this in the sense that maybe Poch knows that PSG would rather have Zidane, so he's either floating these rumors out there or actively trying to find a way out because he, I think we can all agree, right, that PSG would fire or sack Poch in a second if they could bring in Zidane, right? No? Oh, that's... I- yeah, you can go ahead first. Yeah, go ahead, Carl. Okay, yeah, no, so I'm not sure. There is there is always a big severance package to pay if you want to uh, get rid of a coach. And, I mean, and, and you also have to pay sort of signing bonus to a potential Sydney DC then. But if Poch isn't happy and then and they agree to mutually sort of part ways from the contract, then... Sure, uh, but uh, I mean, I mean, Zidane talked directly to to the supporters of Real Madrid, and I'm not sure he would want to sort of start there by looking for for new clubs. You know, I, I just think it was a sort of genuine um, comments towards the fans, uh, and it would be quite. I, I wouldn't, as a Real Madrid, if I was a Real Madrid fan, I wouldn't want him to start sort of fishing for new clubs in his farewell message so to speak i think we just he was just speaking truth to his truth at least and uh kose what do you think about the whole zidane story and how it relates to psg and pochettino yeah i mean it's a hard one honestly and and uh you know there were there was many rumors and many speculation throughout the year about what was going to be happening with sina and if he was going to stay if he was going to leave now we know more about why he's trying to leave and you know what he's trying to achieve and and honestly again you know once again i think about how can this affect psg um and if he you know felt that maybe the club did not have the confidence in him to be able to you know take full control and build the project that he was aiming for i don't know if that's if that's what he's gonna find at psg i mean whether you like him or not i feel like leonardo has a lot of control over what goes over, you know, squad building and the footballing, just general direction of the of the club. So even if Sidon does come, I don't know if he will be offered the kind of freedom that he that he wants. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, with the manager situation, it's ongoing, right? It's like a manager comes in, but there's always speculation that Neymar is really running the club or Mbappe and that the players have too much influence. And I think that Zidane would be the level of manager who has the credibility where – I think he would command that dressing room unlike any manager that we've had previously. You know, Pochettino hasn't really won that much. Even Tuchel, when he came in, didn't really win that much when he was at Dortmund. Um, Laurent Blanc, he's a fine manager. Unai Emery had a lot of Europa Leagues. But Zidane, multiple Champions League, World Cup winner. I think that he would command that dressing room unlike any other. And I think if PSG have the opportunity, cause, or, um, Carl, to your point, I understand that you know, buyouts and, and all that is going to get expensive. But 
PSG, I think, could probably afford it, especially when we talk about some of the the amount of money that they're they're looking to spend this summer. So I feel like they could get rid of Poch if they needed to and bring in Zidane. Um, I think there's definitely something going on here. You know, I, the, the stories just kind of link up too much. And as I mentioned, I think it's going to be a domino effect. If PSG can get Zidane, I think Pochettino's on his way out and he's just looking for a nice place to land, whether that's maybe him going to Real Madrid or maybe he's going back to Tottenham. We'll have to find out. Um, real quick, I want to ask you guys, any issue with Zidane if he does become a manager at PSG, you know, being from Marseille? I don't have the same... I have a very strong emotional connection to Peshe, but I don't have the same connection as Parisians do, obviously, who has lived uh, their entire life or large parts of their lives in Paris, Um, or Marseille fans, for that matter, uh, in their attitudes towards uh, uh, Paris and PSG. So I don't have a problem with it. The question is, do the would the fans have a problem with it, and would Zidane have a problem with it? He never played for uh, Marseille, but he was born in Marseille, so yeah. And that's something that I think you know we we are fans, we're passionate, we do a podcast, we talk about it constantly about PSG, but we we are missing that link. We don't, we're not from France, we don't have that territorial, um, I don't know, passion that the the people that live there have, and so. When I say like the ultras would likely have an issue with it, they probably would have something to say. But if you could bring a Champions League title, I think we would all be okay with someone from Marseille being the manager of PSG. So we'll have to we'll have to see where this story goes. But um, what I want to ask you guys is just point blank: when next season starts, who will be PSG's manager? If you are betting, who would you bet on? Pochettino, one hundred percent. No, not one hundred percent. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go with Carlo right there. Right there. He, yeah, I think it's Pochettino going to be the manager. I think this is, you know, this is a very, very big river to cross if all this, if all of this, these things happen and and Zidane ends up becoming PSG's manager. But you know, um, I, I, I still have trust in Pochettino. And I think he's gonna be the the man at the head next season. Yeah, and I did see a report that Leonardo activated or the club activated another year on his contract so it seems like they're ready to stick with them so maybe they already know Zidane's not going to come and that's going to be a, a bridge too far um so maybe that doesn't I think happen it was an sort of automated uh clause though but that that being said if he were like the only possibility for him leaving would be if him and leonardo would sort of fall out publicly and i don't believe they w- would especially since uh, there is some sort of an active season going on. Yeah, at least from the club and Pochettino, there's doesn't feel like there's any riff, you know, as we, and we'll talk about Tuchel here in a second, but with Tuchel, there was definitely publicly really solid reports about those two clashing. Everything that I'm seeing from Pochettino and the club and Leonardo seems like they get along. They're already talking about summer transfers. So, um, yeah, I would say maybe I'm, I'm 60, 65% sure that Pochettino uh, will be the manager next year, but... Um, so I, I think we're all favorable on that end, but you never know with PSG, anything is possible. Uh, before we get into the transfers, I want to ask you guys, how bad of a look is it for Leonardo that Thomas Tuchel sacked basically on Christmas Day from PSG? He goes on, signs for Chelsea, and then wins the Champions League with Thiago Silva, former PSG captain, playing a major role for the team. So how bad does this make Leonardo look? Carl? You you hinted at him earlier, so now is your time to just go in and rip him if you want. I, I don't want to rip him. I, I'm, I'll do that on Twitter, but it, it doesn't look good at all. Uh, I've been a sort of Tuchel supporter in terms of sport, sporting wise uh, for a long time uh, before b- before he left, and I supported him during that whole process. I I, I thought his Firing was uh, unwarranted. Uh, firstly, uh, there were there was always going to be hard times following the craziness that came with COVID and uh, the Champions League being played in a completely different way, not having any preseason, tired players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We've, we've been through that before. But what it every what all this does is sort of prove that Tuchel never was a problem. And in fact, he was a very, very, very good manager. He is a very good manager. Uh, and his 
and Leonardo's inability to work with people really hurts him. And that, that, that is how I see the situation. Uh, he, if reports are to be sort of uh, taken for what they are with the Pochettino, he has a hard time cooperating, cooperating with Pochettino. Um, and that, that was one of the main fire, uh, reasons behind uh, Tuchel's firing, that they did, did, they did not get along at all. So, sort of his selfish, Leonardo's selfish pettiness has led PSG to uh, sort of stagnate or, in my opinion, become slightly worse to her in Pochettino. And we saw uh, the other week how Bayern München treated their uh, departing legends in uh, Jérôme Boateng and uh, David Alaba. Uh, e even though there was a COVID thing going, uh, COVID going on, and then you look at how PSG and Leonardo handled the Cavani and Thiago Silva situation, just it honestly makes me makes me a bit uh, a bit sad because uh, Thiago definitely deserved more than what he got, and so did Cavani as well. And to Thiago Silva's credit, he did talk about PSG after winning the Champions League, and he, and he said that he hopes PSG wins it next, and so. He's a, you know, became a French citizen. He, he's someone who wanted to be here, and fortunately, the money didn't work out. Or Leonardo thought he was overpriced for given his age. But as he, I mean, he he wasn't a bench player for Chelsea. I mean, he played major minutes, was a major contributor for them. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. It was it was sad to see them go on and win, uh, and not in a PSG colors. But um, yeah, Kose, sweet. Yeah, uh, in my that's opinion, good, uh, that's exactly. Good word. I really, uh, I mean, he has been Thiago Silva has been one of the best defenders over the past 12, 10 years. Probably, in my opinion, the the best one technically. Uh, and for him to, of course, not end his career, but he is what, what is thirty six now, uh, so he's come coming to this while of this of his career, uh, and for him to win the Champions League is just brilliant. Mm -hmm. And when you consider well, how thin PSG were at center back, it would have been great to have him even for depth. You know, start Kempembe and Marquinhos, have him coming off the bench or something. It's a move that didn't make sense, and I guess maybe he was just asking for too much money. And I think Chelsea's going to give him an extension. So, yeah, bad move from Leonardo. Um, you see, I'm I'm just I'm just happy for uh, Tuchel and Thiago Silva because I think they deserve it, and they're they're fantastic. He's a Thiago Silva is a fantastic player, and and Tuchel is an incredible coach. Um, but I think you have to take things for what it is. And that is, uh, when I do disagree with Carl, because I, even though I wasn't necessarily pro Tuchel out or wanted him to, you know, leave the club as soon as possible, I do think that he was part of the problem because every single club that he's ever been to, he's end, ended up burning all, all of the bridges with the people there. And he left mines in a ball of fire and he left Dortmund in a ball of fire and he left PSG in a ball of fire. And so even though he's a fantastic tactician and and he does build a certain, um, you know, ambiance around the squad and, and how they play their games and how they approach football in general, he ends up always burning bridges with administration and 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 he kind of, I feel like he kind of wants to be the man, you know, the, 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 the big man at every club. And unfortunately, that's not primarily, at least now, um, in modern football, what coaches do, and um, I I think that the time that he went was the time that he had to leave, and I'm I'm glad that he's at Chelsea doing great things, and you know hopefully he'll he'll have a he'll have better relationships there. Yeah, and let's not forget, you know, I echo a lot of what you guys are saying. Great tactician, great manager, one of the the world's best. He stepped into a really good situation at Chelsea. They just came off a summer where they just went on a spending spree, signed all kinds of world-class talent. They've got a really solid English core there. Um, they ended up on the easier side of the Champions League bracket. So I think it all just kind of fell into alignment for Tuchel. And, you know, he did his thing, and hats off to him. Um, but I, I think that he landed in a really, really good position at Chelsea. If he got there maybe a year before, probably wouldn't have been as good. But yeah, the, some of the players they signed, the Chelsea was a team I was like, I don't know if I want to play them because I just think every position they're just really solid with not just talent, but young talent, lots of pace um, and experience. And so um, definitely a scary team. And, and I think that if Tuchel cannot burn any bridges there, I think Chelsea's going to be a very strong contender 
um, for the Champions League next year and moving forward. Um, I also think that you got to give him credit. How many times did he beat Pep this year? Was it four times? Three? Three times? I mean, the Guardiola killer. Sure. Yeah, I know three yeah, for sure. Okay. Because I know they, they played him twice in the league, and then they had to play him in the uh, domestic cup where they beat him, and then again in the Champions League. So he's... Uh, Was it twice in the league? I'm Shouldn't sorry? Just one. Shouldn't be just once in the league since, since he joined after... Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Three times. I got to brush up my Premier League uh, <laughs> results. But yeah, I mean, hats off to Tuchel. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, PSG struggled. We couldn't beat Pep. So he came in and has done it multiple times. So yeah, a little sad. And, and Leonardo definitely has egg on his face. And so Leonardo has to respond in a huge way this summer. So that's where we want to take the podcast now. Let's talk about those transfers. Already some credible rumors swirling, and I want to get your thoughts on them. We all know that the fullback position is probably the weakest and needs to be addressed. It's been reported that PSG have already agreed to a contract with AC Milan's Theo Hernandez and then and, uh, at Inter Milan. Uh, it's being reported that PSG are going all in on Akraf Hakimi and have already agreed to a contract with him. So I just, with those two players, are these good signings? Do you think PSG should break the bank for them? I mean, they're talking about a lot of money not in addition to whatever the contract is. So talk to me about those two players and if you think they're the answer to PSG's fullback woes. We can start. Can I, we'll go with Kosei. We, we, got, we got new information. Okay, Carl, uh, what's the new information? Yeah. Go for it. Well, it's not, it's not you. Sky, uh, Sky Sports d'Italia, the Sky Sports in Italy, say, let's see here. Oh, my French. Let's see. So <laughs> uh, Hakimi will be sold as soon as uh, there's a re- revision of the uh, sort of offer towards 60 million. So maybe the, the reports of 80 million. Uh, that's a bit high. I wouldn't go to 80, but 60 you could justify. Well, that's, that, that's the latest report. And Sky Sports is a usually a reliable source. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Sorry. Next. No, no, no. You're fine. And I guess I'd have to look back. I mean, Hakimi was at Dortmund last season on loan from Real Madrid. I can't imagine Inter Milan spent that much. And I'm just wondering... Why the hell didn't PSG just sign him last year? They paid forty-five million. Yeah, so I mean, you could have got him for that. Now you're you're paying a tax on that, basically, to sign him from Inter Milan. I don't I don't understand why we just didn't get him last year from Real Madrid. They want to maintain a good relationship with PSG because they want Mbappe at some point. I just feel like we could have gotten Hakimi last year for a lot cheaper. But um, yeah, anyway, Kose, what do you think about all of this? Well, I think that just like you mentioned, that the the fullback situation is critical, you know, and uh, it Hakimi. I don't know if he would be my favorite pick, but he is definitely one of the more solid right backs that there is available right now. And you know, it is very important that 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 we do find someone in that position because it's one of our, our biggest weakness. Um, and you know, there's some other transfers rumors going around, but I think that. Um, it all depends on the on the price and the kind of deal that we can get because it is true that if you compare the 45 million that we could have gotten him last year when he was a target and I thought he would be a good a good solution I thought that they were probably snubbing him maybe for Atal or some of the other promising right backs um, only to end up getting Florencia alone which you know he wasn't terrible but we will be overpaying so much when we also need to address um, other parts of the squad. So we need to be as effective as possible fixing a very a position that's in a, in a dire need to be fixed. And then there's um, Hernandez as well at AC Milan. He's a player, again, linked with PSG the last couple seasons. Carl, I mean, talk about him, maybe Hakimi as well. If you're looking for fullbacks who can win you the Champions League, who are that Champions League level, would you put these two in that bucket, or do you think that they're maybe a step down? So we, we, we've seen bad fullbacks win Champions Leagues before. Um, but yeah, they're really good fullbacks. I am not convinced of uh, Tio Hernandez, simply because I'm not sure that is a position we're in dire need of uh, sort of improvement. We have two very, very solid Champions League fullbacks in uh, Juan Bernat, assuming he will come back from uh, injury sort of to, uh, in his old form. And we have uh, Abdou Diallo, who I believe is a very competent, uh, especially defensive fullback. And I know, yeah, 
Levin Kosova, yeah, he can respect, respectfully go. Uh, I mean, he, he's probably a, a nice guy, but he isn't really the quality uh, I'm looking for in a left back. Uh, and we also have Mitchell Bakker, who I, I personally believe is great uh, in terms of sort of it, taking into account his age, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a lot of people don't agree with me, but I, I think, it's, especially defensively, he's very good. Uh, so I'm not sure splashing 40, 45 million for uh, Thierry Hernandez is really needed. Uh, I think center back is a more urgent area of uh, sort of improvement for uh, for PSG. In terms of right back, uh, Ashraf Hakimi, 60 million, even though it's not 80, is still a lot of money. Uh, if we, in terms of signing him last season, we didn't have. Uh, I mean, we mostly signed players on loan, so I'm not sure our war chest was that large. But also, if we were to get into that sort of negotiation uh, bidding war, uh, the fee would maybe have gone up by five or ten million to to close what it is now. So I'm not sure that would have made a huge amount of di- the difference. But given his positioning is usually. Uh, his best posi- position, I should say, is usually right wing back, even left wing back, slightly h- higher up the field. I'm not sure, even though he would be very good at right back, I'm not sure if you want to splash that kind of cash to uh, on a player who actually doesn't fit the system perfectly. I would rather go with uh, Nordi Mukiele from... Uh, yeah, from probably, Leipzig. Uh, Leipzig. Probably half the price, a very competent fullback. As I said, I don't believe you need world, world, world class. Uh, you don't need a 2011 Dani Alves to win a uh, Champions League. You, you just don't. Um, I mean, uh, Chelsea won uh, in 2012 with, was it Burton, Bert Burton uh, at left back. So uh, you need a competent left back or full back, but you don't need a world class. And uh, Mukiele is far better than uh, sort of your average fullback. He's very good. He's not world yeah. really very good. Uh, to be honest, I'd be happy with either one, Hakimi or uh, Mukiele. Let me ask you, if you didn't go with Hernandez, if you had, say, you, you mentioned $45 million, if you had that kind of money, is there a center back out there that you would prefer uh, in, instead? Um, Kose and I were talking about Sven Bartman at uh, Lille as a potential center back that you could bring in. I'm sure you could get him for under 45 and i think he's a really really young solid central defender um dutch international so what do you think about him would you would you go after him or is there another center back do you think would be a better fit botman is obviously very good joined uh in, in last summer for Lille, and he has been great uh the issue with him is I, I think a lot of people are looking at him he's got a lot of a lot of ice on him uh, because he has been a mainstay in the team that beat uh, Paris Saint-Germain to the title. I did sort of a half scouting thing on Twitter uh, one or two weeks ago when I uh, I looked at, um, I forget his, I think it's um, Maxence Lacroix uh, at Wolfsburg, a French 22-year-old, uh, I believe, uh, has been great for Wolfsburg this season. Uh, they, of course, made the Champions League. And it's been a mainstay in that team. Uh, a good defensive unit, large, sort of tall, very young. Uh, one of the many young French defenders in uh, the Bundesliga. So, uh, yeah, Co- that, Kose that, and I love uh, Wolfsburg. We were talking about uh, Kevin and Babu uh, at right back. You know, he might be another player that you, you look at. Um, I, I really, I like the the Wolfsburg team. So, um, interesting. Okay, uh, Kose, anything you want to add on the fullback situation before we move on? Oh, I'm just saying that I'm terrified of bringing young defenders from Germany. That's all I'm going to say. Because last time that we brought one, it hasn't been incredible. But um, I will say that that um, I, you know, if I was, you know, PSG, Hollywood FC, I would go after Sergio Ramos. And, there we go. You know, get that, get that, uh, get that wage bill. You know, whatever it is, make him come in. Um, and I think that, you know, that would be something amazing to have at the club. Um, obviously, you know, we, we've talked so much about the right back situation. Um, I agree with uh, with uh, Carl and, and and you, I think, but because Teo Hernandez, he is definitely not the 
not even the quality um, that we would be looking for, let alone pay over 30 million. Um, so, you know, make make the left back of what we have now. Hopefully Juan Bernal can come back to his old form because we know that he is very reliable and, and, and at, at least at an incredibly attacking um, fullback. So it's always nice to have him on, fix the right back situation, get a center back and, you know, Spend what you need to spend and secure Camavinga. <laughs> can we can we bring Tiago Silva back? He's got his Champions League medal now. Is that? I really, I, I really want him to come back, but there's no way, is it? Yeah, no. Um, here's another rumor that had me scratching my head. I was like, why are we doing this? But Gianluigi Donnarumma, again, AC Milan has been linked with the move to PSG. You've got you know Keeler Navas showing no signs of slowing down. Is this a signing? We don't have to spend too much on this, but like, is this a signing that PSG needs to make at all right now? Go ahead, uh, Kose. No, I think this is this is com- this is complete nonsense to to get Donnarumma. Not only because I believe it doesn't make sense at a sporting level, because we already have a fantastic number one and a very very capable um, deputy um, on the squad. So. I don't think we are in need of, of strengthening the goalkeeping department. So even just sportingly, it doesn't make sense. But even worse would be to have uh, a add a Mino Rayola player in our squad. And that is an agent you do not want to deal with. That is an agent you do not want to get close to. Um, you and I were talking about why Mike Mignon was heading over to Milan. Now, after doing some research, I, I understand that it is because... Mina Rayola was asking for some insane contract conditions and um, Milan just decided to, you know, go for one of the best goalkeepers in Liga and just send him packing on his way. So if Milan were willing to get rid of one of their best players, probably their only world-class player, um, they, it's because that is how bad it is to have a player on those books in your squad. So steer away, run away, and just let's just stay with what we have. Oh, very good point. Carl, anything you want to add to this? Donnarumma? I mean, we already had one Gianluigi, and it didn't work out that great. Do we need another one? So I'm not sure we do. Uh, he is a free agent, right? So we he wouldn't have a um, the actual transfer fee. But as Kose said, the b- b- both the whole everything around uh, Mino Raiola but also the agent's fee for the or the signing bonus, whatever, would probably be huge. And what what are you gonna do? Either you're gonna keep him on the bench for a season, or you're gonna bench Kilov Navas. But at the same time, I had some people saying, okay, you know what? We loan him out for a season. I'm not sure that is possible. When do we see that happen? You see that happened with uh, when bigger clubs sign good youngsters from smaller clubs and then they they can't right. guarantee them playing time yeah, so they they loan them out either back or to, to a similar uh size team but it's it's just once again that's that's not how you build a squad at all no yeah in my opinion no, not at all. And I think everyone's happy with Nava. So this is one I think we can all pass on. But I want to get your thoughts. We haven't talked about this guy in a while. So, uh, Messi, you guys may have heard of him. Do you think the moves that Barcelona are making right now are going to be enough to keep Messi? Or do you think we're going to see him move this summer? And I think if he does, it's either going to be PSG or Manchester City. So just talk about Barcelona's situation. If you think some of the moves they made, if you have a feeling that he's going to stay, or do you think he's going to decide he wants to go and do you think PSG should make a run at him anyone want to take this one uh, I'm pretty sure he will stay I feel like 80 90 percent right now uh, there has the rumors about him leaving has completely died down uh, from what I've seen at least this signed uh, Sergio Aguero and that I mean they're friends uh, not, not, not that that always matters, but in this case, I'm, uh, sort of with the circumstances around it, I believe it does. Yeah, even uh, Memphis yeah. Depay has been linked with them. So um, yeah. it is interesting. If Aguero goes there, it's hard to imagine that Messi would leave, but you never know. Kose, what do you think? You think Messi's going to be leaving Barcelona, and do you think PSG should make a run at him? Hollywood FC, bring him in. <laughs> Ramos, Messi, I love it. 
What about Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo? Just whatever. Just bring him. I in say too. everything. Everything. <laughs> uh, no, but um, I do think that I, I saw this tweet earlier that I really laughed uh, laughed at because it said um, that they're convinced that you know Messi has a very hard time working his full time position as Barcelona sporting director because he just plays endless Copa Americas in the summers. Um, so I think that that kind of that tweet kind of points out what the humor in the situation is because. I think that, you know, they're clearly trying to keep Messi um, and nothing says I want to keep my star player as bringing his best friend from, you know, childhood to to this to this team when I think Aguero is a fantastic player. And I think, you know, that we all, all know the quality that a player like that can bring. But Barcelona were the, the highest goal scoring team in the league the the last season. They don't need a, a person to score goals. They need a, to patch their, their defense. So I don't know. I don't think that... The, the decisions that Barcelona are making as a club are the sort of decisions that are going to improve their project and and maybe, you know, change their situation. Uh, but they're definitely trying to to appease Messi and trying him to to stay there. So even though I would like, as I said, for PSG to, you know, open the, the wallet and just bring everyone, um, I think he's, he's probably going to be staying in Barcelona. Yeah, that's no fun. Um, okay, I, I think with Messi, I, I kind of lean your guys' direction. I think he'll probably stay. Although, is that the best move for his career right now? Probably not. I don't think Barcelona is that close to winning a Champions League. I think he needs a new team. If, if that's his goal, to win one more, I don't think it's going to be at Barcelona. So he's going to have to make that decision. Does he want to move on to a team where he can be play still a big part but have others around him that can kind of carry the load? Or does he want to stay at Barcelona and continue doing that heavy lifting and and finish second or maybe even third in La Liga. That's, that's a decision he'll have to make. He, I'm sure if he wants, if he does decide he wants to leave, I'm sure PSG will definitely make the phone call and gauge his interest. Um, moving on, Eduardo Camavinga has turned down a contract extension from Ren. We know that PSG could make a move for him. And as we've already talked about, there's several players that we're thinking they're going to cost between 30, 50 million, maybe more. Who do you anticipate? PSG needing to sell in order to afford these players. Do you think Moise Keane is, is still in play as a potential long-term signing? Do PSG even really need him? Or maybe, you know, should they look at Robert Lewandowski, who's uh, hinted at maybe he wants to leave Bayern Munich? So just kind of talk about that in general. What players need to be outgoing in order to afford some of these players coming in? What moves do you see happening, Carl? Um, in terms of uh, Kamavinga... Those rumors have really, really died down. There's three or four days yeah, where they have, uh, and that could be down to multiple reasons. He's with the U21s right now uh, at the U21s Euros, uh, so it could be that he wants to focus on his yeah. uh, his uh, games with yeah. them. But, but I'm not sure. I, I would love uh, Kim Winga. Hopefully, we could get him for a sort of cut price both given his uh contract situation but also the fact that he, did, he didn't actually play that well this season and that is usually when you want to go for promising players when they've had a down season because young players apart from Kylian Mbappé will always have down seasons and that is when their value is going to be the lowest so that's when you want to poach them so I really hope we can get him uh, in terms of outgoings oh my god there is there are many I want. You mentioned <laughs> uh, Kurzawa, but who else? Yeah, like, Kurzawa, I want probably. I don't know. I like Sarabia. I think he gets his bad. I mean, he, he gets a lot of stick, and I'm not sure it's a serve. He doesn't get a lot of game time, but he contributes quite a lot when he's actually on the field. We know Florenzi is probably going to be leaving. He's here on loan. Yeah, he, I mean, he is. He is. I guess that. Yeah. Truly. Or is he? I don't know. I'm not actually sure. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he, 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 he's 100% not extending. I'm not counting him in that. Uh, I would love for some club to pick up Tilo Kerr for about... I mean, He's been linked with Arsenal. Out. I think Tilo Kerr has been linked yeah. with Arsenal. If, if we could get in the excess of $17 million for him, I would be happy. Midfield, maybe you want to get rid of someone... Uh, I mean, Danido, I, I think he defied my ex expectations personally. We but, bought him now. So, We're stuck with him. Am I? 
What? No, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I thought. I thought, I thought oh no, said, yeah, De- was, Danilo. I think we we had to pick up his whatever because we I don't know what the yeah, exactly. yeah so, but he, he's he's a permanent player now. He he defied my expectations. He, he was better than I thought, but his age profile uh, is completely wrong, and you want to sort of make space for other people in that uh, in that team. So yeah, a, a lot of outgoings. Uh, We'll see what happens with uh, Moise Kane. Uh, I'm not sure. I wouldn't pay a, in the excess of maybe 40, 40, maybe 45 at the stretch for him. I like him, but I'm not sure he is 50 million pounds yeah. plus. What about Mario Cardi, who PSG did pay 50 for? Uh, Kose, I can hand it over to you. Start with a Cardi. Is he a player that PSG should and can move on from? And do you see any other departures? I mean, you know that I'm not an incredibly big fan of Icardi, and especially he had, you know, that cardio session against City. But um, I do think that, you know, if he's the striker that we have and, and getting more skin is getting increasingly difficult. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. If it does, we know it's going to be very expensive. Um, so I think we have bigger priorities. We need to make sure that we fix that right back spot. We need to make sure that we, <clears throat> um, as Carl said, the Kamavinga rumors have died down, but... Hopefully that's something that we can still still pursue. Um, in my personal opinion, I think PSG should do everything they can. That should be pr- uh, priority number one to get Kamavinga um, into the team. Um, so I think that you can you can put that striker that striker position in in the in the back burner, you know. And and Icardi when he came back, he started to score goals. And you know if he can get his confidence back and can get back into match fitness, he can be a very dangerous player. So my my expectations really rely on the team fixing some of the defensive issues. I would like to see um, redundant players like uh, Levin Kozawa leave. Um, or, you know, there's some a few midfielders that might be, you know, a little suspects like Hunter Herrera and company. Um, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see what they decide. Um, I think our attack is not in, in desperate need at the moment um, as our other positions. So, you know, do what you need to do, spend what you need to spend and, and hopefully get rid of some of, of some of the, those redundancies in the squad. Yeah. I could see maybe Adrisa Gay. He was kind of linked. I think Newcastle last summer was interested in him and he ended up sticking around. Um, we, I think we all assumed Draxler would be a player moving on, but he signed an extension, so he's not moving on. Um, I agree with a lot of what you guys are saying. If you could find a buyer for Kozawa, it seems interesting that we gave him that extension before last season so um but i think icardi's the big one i think if you can move him he's probably one of your biggest prized assets if you can move him and get something for him i think that'd be great um i do just want to read the the Lewandowski. he said um comments he said i remain open-minded i feel very good at Bayern. the city is superb and it's a great club i'm always curious to learn a new language and a new culture but whether it will be in football or after my career even i don't know so that's that's the quote that everyone is hitting on and thinking that maybe Lewandowski will leave. I don't think that will happen, but I think he is the type of player you could bring him in. He has all the experience in the world, super talented, and I just think he's a player that is going to be a, a, like a team player. I, I think a lot of guys will like him, and, and uh, I think if you have any chance to bring a player of that quality in, I think you have to go for it, but we'll have to see. Guys, I do I mean, want to oh, go ahead. I was just saying that would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> to just suddenly have Lewandowski on your team. Uh, it, it would be nice. I mean, he's been at Bayern for a long time, and maybe he is looking for a new adventure. And I think, oh my goodness, could you imagine Lewandowski, Neymar, and Mbappe? Incredible. Um, I want to end on this topic, Mbappe. You know, we started the show talking about Zidane stepping down from Real Madrid. We know the length between Real Madrid and Mbappe. So as you survey the landscape right now, the way the transfer market seems to be taking shape, how do you see this contract extension playing out? I don't. For me, I can kick this off. For me, I I think he wanted to go to Real Madrid because Zidane. He he admires Zidane. There was a whole story where he you know Mbappe when he was a kid going to there and he rode in Zidane's car and and he just has this affinity for Zidane and and I think with him stepping down that takes some of the luster off of Real Madrid for Mbappe, and I, I think that he needs to sign a contract extension with PSG, maybe two years, and and see where things lay at that time. But I, I, I don't know. If I'm PSG, I, I think you got to start setting deadlines because you do not want an Adrian Rabio situation with Mbappe going into the last year and you lose him for nothing. I think PSG 
with Zidane leaving, that gives them the onus to put some pressure on Mbappe and say, if you want to leave, you need to tell us now, or here's the contract, go ahead and sign it for two years. So I think PSG should start putting the pressure on him to get this thing done as soon as possible. But what do you guys think? I'm, I'm not sure we have an uh, PSG ha- has any leverage here. So I'm not sure you can just do that. Um, yeah, I, I think you need to show your intentions with your sort of checkbook in terms of signing new players. Uh, his wage demands, for the ones that, that have been reported, ha- haven't been astronomical. And the sort of his side of the story is he, he wanted to believe in the project and you need clever signings, you need big signings to do that. Uh, and I, yeah, as I said, I, all the leverage lays at his feet. In, in, uh, in 12 months, he can sh- choose whatever club he wants that can uh, afford his wages, of course. So, but, I, but I think that's the point where PSG can't allow it to get. I think there needs to be a deadline. And if he doesn't sign, then PSG start accepting offers for him and you sell him for what you can get right now. I think something's better than nothing. And I don't think you want to lose him on a free. That would be horrendous, right? Yeah, but it, n- no one's going to pay. I mean, no. well, you, you, uh, I, I don't want to say no one, but very few uh, teams are, can afford to pay that much for him. And they, they would probably just wait until the next season. But to say like Liverpool was like, hey, we'll give you Mane and, you know, 80 million or something like that. I think that would be better than nothing at all in a year. Sure, but I'm not sure how that's how these things usually play out, at least mm-hmm. when you have big players. Uh, it is rare so that that would happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but maybe, I don't know, uh, honestly. Uh, Kose, what do you think when you look at the the impact that Zidane stepping down has on a player like Mbappe? Do you think it's just a matter of time that until he signs an extension, or or do you think that he's planning a move, or he, you think he, maybe he's waiting to see what signings? I mean, he's got to like what he's hearing at least with Hakimi and Hernandez and um, Kamavinga. Right. I think that's the big one. I think if PSG can bring in Kamavinga, I think him and Mbappe are friends. Um, French national team. I, I think. I think that's the big one. If we could bring him in, I think Mbappe stays. Yeah, I mean, I'm not worried at all about Mbappe's extension because, you know, I I, I would be scared of of uh, of watching Ram, uh, Mbappe at Real Madrid without Neymar. So, I just think that that he knows that that he performs best when he's beside the Brazilian and when not all of the expectations rest uh, solely on him. Um, and I think he feels comfortable at, at, in Paris, and he's been successful in Paris. And I think that you know it's just a matter of time before he signs his extension, uh, especially because there's not another serious project in football um, that is better than PSG. All of the other all of the other projects in football are, are just as serious um, or less. If you think about teams like Real Madrid and or, or Barcelona, especially teams in La Liga at the moment. So I think it's just a matter of time. Um, Liverpool people like to dream that they're going to get him, but I think it, he's going to end up signing his extension. So. Keep dreaming, Liverpool people. Yeah, I don't think... I mean, Chelsea's top dog right now. I don't think he goes there. Manchester City, I don't think he goes there. Bayern Munich doesn't really make any sense. They're they're not... I don't think they would spend that kind of money on him. So, yeah, I mean, PSG is really the only club that makes sense for Mbappe from a business point of view, from a project point of view. And so I'm just like, what the hell's taking so long? Like, Mbappe, what do you want? We'll give it to you. Just sign the contract, you know? I, but I think you're right. I think both of you guys are right. I think he wants to see what signings come in. So it's at least promising that we're seeing these big names early in the transfer window. PSG are not waiting till the last minute. Um, what I hope, and, and Carl, you hinted at this, with Leonardo, I hope he doesn't, you know, go back and forth over the, the transfer fees. You know, if a team wants 55 for Hakimi, don't say I'm not spending over 50. Pay the extra five and just bring the player in. There's so much more. This is so much bigger of a picture. Mbappe needs signings. Don't go back and forth. Don't haggle all over these prices. Just pay what it costs. You know, don't overpay, but you know, don't get caught up in the the small details and just pay what it costs to get these players in. That's most important. We need to win this Champions League. Hopefully, we can do it next season. All right, yep. guys. Um, any last words? We can. Carl, did you have something? Um. Yeah. We- be patient. There's going to be a lot of rumors going around this summer. 
I'm not going, going to be patient, but good is <laughs> good if one of you are uh, on Twitter or online, because if we all go into a frenzy, we're, it's not going to be healthy. But yeah, enjoy the summer, enjoy the Euros. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure I have much to add, <laughs> to be honest. Kose, do you have any parting shots you want to give? Yeah, um, shout out to PSG Feminine that tied with Lyon and are just one single game away of winning Very their good. title. So yes. yeah, hopefully they can get that on Friday and, and that, will, that, that will be one of the highlights of what has been a lackluster <laughs> season. We, I can't. Thank you so much. I should have put that in my notes. So it will be very nice that at least one PSG team can win the league this season. So I know that'll be very exciting. Twitter was lighting up with that when they had, I think it was a nil-nil draw or 1-1, right, against Leon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, they did just what they needed to do. So hopefully they can take care of business and win this title. That'd be fantastic. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, all right, guys. Carl, how can people find you on Twitter if they want to say hey? Well, it's uh, <laughs> my handle is at c o k l l s t r m just find it go to psg talk and you'll find it uh, yes we'll link to it and then uh kose how can people find you uh look me up at kose senior i love it and as always i'm at psg talk make sure you subscribe to the podcast leave us a little review or rate us uh wherever you get your podcast that would be fantastic um Thank you so much. Make sure, again, check out the website, psgtalk.com, and we'll be back soon. We'll wait till more transfer rumors pile up, and then we'll bring the guys back on for another chat. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone.